because the project is so was so well put together that everybody that saw it gave it a positive review. And most people came back more than once and brought somebody with them. Yeah, one lady brought different people three times. Mm -hmm. I've been getting um <clears throat> a lot of uh positive reviews about the documentary, man. A lot of people was like, man, wow, it was informative in a way that it they did they didn't expect that. They expected something different. For mm -hmm. real. They 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 came in, they thought, man, oh man, we thought y'all just gonna be talking about yeah, I see a lot of people you know, was like the back of the balance and you know what I mean, all this whole other stuff, right? But to actually see that we tapped into, you know, mental health and how it affect men that was subjected to these conditions, yeah. man. You know, so it was the programs. Yeah, and the programs that that that, that um Rose Brown started down Lord and, and <laughs> he did it so again. so we it, it was that. we need to play the number tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Voice uh uh there are portions of the film featured this spotlight of play that Played by the inner the inner voices, I believe. Yeah. Tell me about yeah. that and how that was able to be. How y'all was able to get this priceless footage? Yeah, that was all twin, <laughs> man. That was um that that linked up with Rose Brown. You know, I'm gonna tell you, it was crazy. Probably like maybe about six, six, seven years ago, I went down Lawton, right? I was on the internet and I saw that they were doing a film screening in Lawton. Right. So I was like, I'm gonna go down there and check it out. It was Roach showing in his documentary. So I went down there. I had my camera with me. And I went down there and I watched it. I sat in. They got a small theater about this size. And I sat in there and watched it. And he had the inner voices, like six guys that was on the stage singing. The documentary was played behind them. But they was on there singing, so all the singing you hear on that, that's actually them live singing. I recorded it. I hope you dance. So then after the documentary, I went in Harlem and was like, man, this, I, love, I love this right here, man. I want to hook up with you. Woo. But we never hooked up. A couple years went past. Then I ran into him one day at WPFW. And I told him, I said, I told him I wanted a copy of his documentary. He was like, all I got is one copy left. And I don't let nobody see it. I was like, man, you got to let me see this. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I ended up talking him, talking him to it, talking him to it. He was like, all right. So I went to his house. And he didn't even come out. He left it in his mailbox. <laughs> so I went to his mailbox, got it, took it home, ripped it, took his documentary, put it back in his mailbox. <laughs> okay. And once I had that footage and I looked at it, I was like, it's gold right here. I move slow. I'm trying to get the feel. I take three times as long to put on my shoes to lace them up or get to my stool. If I move too fast or laugh or tell a joke because I'm feeling good and haven't felt the vibes of the prison, maybe an inmate was slapped by God or maybe God slapped an inmate. I got to get the feel. If I can't get what's happening with the mood, the pain, the agony, I could get killed. And it'd be just another accident. As prison. Once I start putting us our, our footage together, I know I can uh, integrate that into a, 
and bring it kind of bring it up to date to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, shout out to Roach for that, man. Shout out to all the old timers that uh, gave us a uh, jewels. Yeah, I want to um just touch on you know this real quick. You know, if we would have never got locked up, right? Like somebody asked me, it was Kirk Bone asked me a question. I saw it. If it, it asked me, man, if if I would have never went to jail, what would I be, right? And and I wanted to expand expand on that answer a little bit because I didn't elaborate when I said you know I don't know. Because I didn't know shit but the streets. You know what I mean? That's all I knew. I had to play football, basketball, I mean, box and shoot a gun. But it was other things that I did know but wasn't taught or shown how to bring it out me. Cultivated, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And it wasn't until I went to Lorton and I got around certain old timers that, that dropped jewels on me. They dropped knowledge on me, real like golden nuggets. And I, I retained that information and I grew with it. So I learned a lot down low, and, and a lot of my talents was able to come out of me while I was incarcerated that I kept bottled up inside me when I was on the streets because my mentality was streets. You see what I'm saying? I was thinking my, my mentality really was the streets. So like that, that's why I always say when we have our Q&A, man, you know, education is key. And I learned a lot when I, I was in I've seen a lot of people been locking on to that, that education thing you've been saying. That you yeah, been because it's real, bro. You dig on that because... But when I tap into that, when I I told myself, man, you know what? I gotta I gotta I gotta educate myself in a way. I ain't never been no dummy. I just didn't go to school because I was missing money in the streets. Right. So the education piece, man, was um it's really important to me, and I hold it dear to heart because it helped me change my life. You do, man. It helped me see life differently. It helped me like really appreciate and it helped you change your life and how long did you have to work on changing your life before you was able to do these things? I mean, I, I spent 25 years day for day in that joint. You know, it helped me a lot, bro. It helped me like separate the negative from the positive in my life and, and put me on the road, man, to, um, you know, redemption, man. And uh, I really, man, like really learned about empathy. And then I am, I don't want nobody to think I'm getting solved because I'm, I'm, Far from that, but I became compassionate in a way as though, man, I really care about my youngest, my young homies. And I don't want them to fall victim to what we fell victim to because they got so wrapped up in the streets and didn't allow themselves to learn nothing else. You know what I mean? To educate themselves, man. Like, for real, like, don't think that it's not cool. I don't want none of the youngest to think that it's not cool to learn something. Because you can learn something from everybody. I don't yeah, give a fuck. That's why I asked him to go into that whole self talk thing. You got to know something, right? You know what I mean? Because, like, you younger than me, but I still learn something from you. Mm -hmm. I got younger homies, man, that when I'm sitting around and I talk to them and I hear certain things and I retain that information, that's how you that's how you grow when you hear something that's valuable enough for you to remember. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to remember that. So now when you remembering this information, you able to add it to your repertoire, your roller deck, and now you got all this knowledge now. That's how your knowledge adds up. Okay, no doubt. So I definitely want people to take that message. So in closing, I don't want to miss this one. I want. I had two questions I wanted to get in with uh, both of y'all for real. So uh, for, I'm going to start with you, Twin. So uh, how much do you think you had to leave out of this film? You know, as B said, 90-some years. You said, shoot, maybe 200 years. How much do you think you had to leave out of, let's say, this installment? I think this is 1% of North. Okay. I think it's still 99% of stories that could be told. What you think, SB? How much do you think we left out? I, I mean, I don't even... I, it's hard to say, to say, but I know it's a lot of history, man, that, that wasn't captured. It's a lot of stories, man, that wasn't captured in this film, in this documentary. And like I said, man, whoever, whatever network you know, is fortunate enough to get their hands on this. I hope they understand that they, they got a priceless gold mine right here. You know what I mean? With a mountain of history, man, that could be added on to what we already produced already. Quick question right here. This is the last question, so you know. I had to leave something interesting for the people. So, when you hear the term Lawton legend, what comes to your mind? What is a Lawton legend? A Lawton legend is someone, man, that Went to Lorton, did his time like a man, was respected, respected others, <laughs> you know. And the best way I could sum up a Lorton legend, man, is somebody, man, that was honorable, 
you know, on man time, stood on his tin, respected, respectable, you know what I mean, and conducted himself, man, with the proper mannerism and respect. He always showed others respect and at the same time wasn't going for nothing. What you think, man? What's the Lord and legend? When you hear that term, what you think? I man? agree with it, right? And what's crazy is one of my youngins a couple of days ago just texted me that. He said he say the word legend is thrown around too loosely. Mm-hmm. And there's too many people that's considered Lord and legends. He, went, he asked me, what is a Lord and legend? Oh, that same question. He asked me the same question. He say it's thrown around too loosely. What did what it mean? He say Charlie said, "Man, I was in the feds, and I pushed a knife." He said, "I ain't never told on nobody." He said, "I wasn't going for nothing, but I don't consider myself a legend." He said, "I want to know why this word is thrown around so loose." I told him because he said too many people are considered legends. I could, I can I, I could, I could, I could, look there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I agree with Trent, but um. I want to I want to add some to it too, right? Because um, what I had missed was um, the fact that you know I don't want to I don't want to downplay or take away from the men that was down Lord man that produced these programs and these this this education. And I think system. that's legendary. Though. It is legendary. Oh. So that's why I said you know what I mean I don't want to I don't want to I don't want them to be not recognized for it, for. It. Everything that they've done yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything that they brought to the compounds down low and that was able to put men in industries and in, in positions, man, to make money and send money home. Right. You see what I'm saying? I think that in itself was legendary. So, yeah, men that was able to think and put together programs and jobs and everything like that. You know what I mean? And that's what I told them. I say it's, it's, it's so many different areas of that. Because you could be a legend. You could be a legend as an author. I say that to people. Like oh, I try to yeah. duck all the other stuff and say, "Well, that's what well, that's what they're gonna remember me for." Oh, Charlie was a juvenile and he wrote some books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could be a legend as an author, and and somebody could be a legend in their neighborhood, but nobody outside the neighborhood knew that person. Now, now on top of that, though, you got a lot of people that that was downloading that was talented in every every genre, every field that you could think of, whether it be boxing, basketball, football, baseball, bass guitar playing. Drums, whatever it was. Law Library. So those men are legendary in their own right too because I know some dudes, man, that was had that basketball in their hand, man, that do the same thing Michael Jordan would do. Yeah. Yeah, I know. If not that's legendary on that court. Yeah. I know some men that man put them lace them gloves up, man. Them sixteen ounce joints and man and put you down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Legendary in that ring. Exactly. It was legendary in that ring. So you know man, that I don't want them men to be lost in that either because and like I said, in their own right, that's legendary too. Right. So, so your question was, what makes a Lord legend? Nah, what it's is? No, no, no. My question actually was, when you hit the term Lord legend, like Sean, they text you, what comes to mind? And it was a follow up question saying, what is a Lord legend? So y'all, y'all opinions and which I said answered both of the questions. Right. I just wanted to hear that. I mean, and for me, you know, I concur with it. And, uh, I, I think my partners answered the question very, very maturely. But since they already covered all the brothers that was legendary, they did some pop, some some positive things. You know, some of these guys was legendary for actually doing some other things. You know, we can't leave some of those guys out too when we tell the story of Lord, because you know some of these guys is the guys that went to the feds, and you know, to excuse my language, when everybody else was getting taken bad, their talent wasn't too file a motion. Their talent wasn't to go to church or go to the mosque or go to the temple. Their talent was look, we ain't going for this and we're going to do this and I'm not going to glorify the violent part but many of us that came behind them was able to be comfortable for them so even some of those guys get a nod too. Well, can, I, can I add on that? Sure enough. Because um, something just popped in my head that um, Gene Gotti told me down Polak, mm-hmm. John Gotti's brother and, and not to glorify the violence or nothing like that but when you got guys that have a violent nature, right? Like, like twin said, a young boy say, "I ain't going for that. I push my knife too." That don't, that don't mean I'm a legend. It don't, because you know you got a whole lot of people that push a knife. Mm-hmm. It ain't about who you push it. Like, if you could push a knife, it's about who you push the knife on. Mm-hmm. And why? And why? And why? So he, Gene was telling me, say, "Man, this what made this was separated his brother. This was separated John Gotti from the rest of the mob, the rest of the hitters that was with the mob, right?" Is when he killed Paul. So that will put him in a position now to be a boss. So he's like, man, it ain't about who you hit. It ain't about how many you hit. It's about who you hit. 
Yeah. That's that was legendary when he did that. That's what made him in that realm. In yeah, that realm. in that world. Yeah, so uh, no doubt I appreciate y'all coming on talking about this so we can get the word out. But in closing, you know what I'm saying, Ken, uh, I know you got a lot of stuff going on, but just tell the people what you got going on and where they can find you at after they see you on here. All right, well, you can, you can follow me on Instagram, SeanTeflon.Branch. And um, I just started my production company, man, 4327 Productions, uh, under Soundgate Management, uh, DM. D and D management. Um, we got some good things, man, on the horizon, man. We about to bring uh, a visual to Money Murder Mayhem. We've been knocking on some doors. You know, what I mean, we've been talking to a few people, man, to try to um, bring the people's this visual. Got the sizzle reel together. We got everything, the pitch deck together. We got you know the uh, storyboards, everything together. So we ready to hit these this road, man, and go talk to these people at these networks. And see what happened, man. Cause um, and I feel good about it. You know, what I mean, I, I really feel good about it because now I can start to see, you know, some light with this project and and my business starting to come into fruition. Mm. So just 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 stay on the lookout, man. Keep your ears, your eyes open for um Triple M. It's coming. Mm. Same with you, man. Uh, what you got? First and foremost, uh, before you even go into what he said, uh, yeah, um, uh, what else you got? And where can everybody see all your films and all your stuff, your catalog that you already completed? Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at, at KareemMo100. And uh, I, got, I got three films on Amazon Prime that I wrote, directed, edited. Um, one of my other films got put off Amazon Prime. That's crazy. Enjoy Secret and my it got put off Amazon Prime because... Did you have it somewhere else? It's on YouTube. I got that on YouTube. But it got put off of, put off of Amazon Prime because one of the characters in the film, he, on his, he, always, looking at his, he always looking at porn on his iPod. His iPad, <laughs> right? But I blurred the porn. Mm -hmm. And they still kicked it off for blurred porn. It's ridiculous. Oh, I ain't know that. But they don't stop. They ain't kicked nothing off for violence. Right. People get their hair blown off all day just don't show no tips. Okay, all right, I ain't know that. It's crazy. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, Secret of Mind, you got to go to YouTube to see it. Yeah, Secret of uh, Mind. I remember uh, yeah. right you back in. Go ahead, no, go ahead. Me, me and E put Secret of Mind together. E was still in prison. I was in prison. And I came home. I go. Did I ever tell you how, how I started writing that joint? Nah, uh uh. <laughs> you just said write this back and forth, and that was my correspondence. <laughs> I was in Sussex. I ain't had nothing else to do, no way. <laughs> this how, is this how we saw, I started writing that film. I mean, we in Ohio, we in the same block together. I got some weed, but I only got one J left. My celly don't smoke. And I'm trying to take this J to the head. I don't want to share this J. Right? <laughs> so I'm being petty. So I'm walking around the whole block. I'm trying to find somewhere I can smoke this J. <laughs> right? So while I'm walking around, I'm checking all the empty cells. They locked. Why well, I pulled one of the doors and it was open. E inside the cell, talking to the CO lady on the intercom. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, so I slid in the cell real quick and closed the joint and just laid back on the bed. He, on the, on, on the intercom, talking to the uh, CO lady, spitting hot grease. Yeah. <laughs> Missing. I'm talking about spitting. Yeah. I laid back on the bed. The cell dark. It's just me and him in there. And I, I light up my J and I'm just listening to him. He just spitting. And she biting too. <laughs> she biting. I'm like, hey, this shit wild as shit. <laughs> <laughs> so after I finished smoking, you know, I, we snuck back out of the cell, closed the door, I went back to my cell, I just thought, all right. And I was just writing, I was just thinking about what he was talking about to, the, to her. And I was just writing, it was, it was a stalker movie, like a dude stalking a woman. But after I finished writing it, I just put it up, that I came home from prison. And I write E. I say, young, I need some letters, because in a, in a film, the dude is writing a girl letters. I said, well, I need you to write some letters like the type of like the shit you was spitting to that. <laughs> <laughs> so he wrote all the letters for that film. Yeah. That whole film got a bunch of letters. Yeah. He wrote all the letters. And when um, I created that film with uh, Lil, Pop, Lil Pop's son. Yeah. yeah. Lil Pop's son, he ended up meeting a girl named Nina that started that film. He murdered. Oh, for real? In real life? In real life, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. Fuck you. I know you ain't finna back down now. We need you. <gasps>
That film did, did real well, man. I like the joint. Yeah, hey, Secret of Mind. Check Secret that out. That's on YouTube. All the other ones on Amazon Prime, yeah. right? Run is on Amazon Prime. June 10th. Two weeks before my ninth birthday, I had a gun pointed at my head. Individuals should be held responsible for their own actions, not the actions of others. More pressure needs to be put on everyone around Mr. Thomas. Everyone! I'm the only nigga out here without a future. My shit uncertain. I should put out because of your ass. The put out? Put out? For, what the fuck? Put out? Evidence room is on Amazon Prime. Follow behind niggas that don't give a fuck about you. I told you about that shit, son. You need to watch your fucking temper. Turn on Amazon Prime. So all I'm gonna say is I'm sorry. I beg for your forgiveness. Goodness. Fuck you. Fuck you, motherfucker. Fuck you, bitch. Okay, and Norton documentary is not streaming yet. Nah. And um, I went to a go-go the other day to see Black Addy. And I was inspired. I stood in the back and all I saw was a movie. Mm. I went home and saw all right. That's what visionaries do though. Anyway, so you capture man, that. Yeah, you are a visionary, so yeah. you heard it first here, man. Check out Money Murder and Mayhem. You're gonna get them visuals soon. Check out everything my man Twin got going on. You know what's up with me. I'm representing that Lord and Legends, Lord and the whole Lord and movie. So, uh, uh, Lord and the Prisoner to a documentary. Check that out. Google Ian Williams. Check all my books out, man. And uh, we're going to catch you next time. We're going to have something else to talk about. Maybe the next time we come out around here, we're talking about we talking about another Lord and film or some other films that we could do working together, man. Appreciate you. Well respected every circle was the purpose Military mannerisms uh, or murder was for certain yeah. Certain things I did, uh, certain things I don't uh, Certain things I will, uh, certain things I won't uh, It's all about respect and the money never fame Mental graduation only dummies never change Still I never change my resume as a banger Benny leave a life, live my life as a dagger so sharp, only stay on point and that's the mission Never change who I is, fuck the pigs, never snitching We coming for the man, ain't the head Hey, don't go watch People that was written on, we write it